Hello and welcome in the IVP series powered by Camelot. Today, an easy topic all about SAP IVP, Excel add-in. But just before that, think of subscribing or putting a like. First question is, what kind of user interface do we have in, in SAP IVP? Hmm, interesting. In fact, we have two user interfaces. Here I have a reported three and you see in the middle SAP GUI. This is not absolutely not available in, uh, for uh, IVP. The first one of this user interface is SAP Fiori. This is a web-based uh, application which uh, displays all the applications, all the transactions available for uh, IVP. The I SAP IVP Fiori uh, proposition is all about customizing the solution and doing some reporting, not really controlling and managing the data, except for order-based planning by means of the planner workspace, as you can see here. And the second user interface is Microsoft Excel. What a good idea SAP had by selecting Excel to be the front end of the new product. It's really a good choice. But of course, like uh, as usual, SAP uses Excel, but not to the full extent of Excel. But that's already good enough to, uh, to have a nice user interface for a, such a planning system. It is of two folds. The first one is allowing you to manage master data. This is a very poor extension, so meaning that you can view, there is no issue, but you can also edit, and that's where it is poor, and there is a very little control, so don't do. Preferably go to the central ERP systems to maintain product, location, customers, whatever data that you use in IVP. That's it's a, a much more reliable way of managing data. And switch to the second fold, which is here, the power of this Excel add-in. This is about transactional master data management. Here, you can maintain anything like sales, like forecast, like, like production quantities, like uh, receipts, like uh, yeah, uh, actual sales actuals and so on, uh, by mean of key figures, which are displayed horizontally usually, uh, and into the, uh, the, the worksheet of Excel. You have, you have some personalization and color management capabilities, which makes your usual display much better. And you can introduce, for instance, some corporate logos uh, in your different grids. Now it's time for the presentation. Let's go directly into the system now. And first, let's see what is this master data stuff in Excel. Here I'm connecting the SCM Lab solution from Camelot, which is the pre-configured solution. Let's see that. And once we are connected, you see that the master data workbook is here available. Let's go directly to the grid, uh, the grid capabilities. Here in this pop-up, what you are supposed to do is to do some kind of filtering about what the master data you want to see and extract it from IVP and display it in Excel. And then you can use your own filters. Okay. And then also select the master data that you want to see. For instance, I want to see out of this current technical setup, I want to see the customers which are concerned and I don't want to edit them. I want to see also the product, the location, say, and also the product. Before that, I go with product, P product. Here it is. And if I want to edit the product, that would be the case how you do to edit the, the, the product. And go, here I'm currently editing those data without any filter, meaning that now I see the customers. This has been displayed. And as I said, it's a poor representation. It's just colon based uh, representation, no help in uh, and no explanation about it. This, the second topic here was uh, selected location. So we see also the location. And the third one was product, but in edit mode, you see the difference here. Now it's orange showing you the key of the product. And here, if I do any change, yes, and I can then later save. And that's my recommendation not to do so. Okay. Next and more important, the planning views. So in IBP, as I mentioned, the transactional data are displayed within so-called planning views. Those planning views are organizing the data in the working area of Excel here. And for that, you can either start from scratch, meaning that you say, I want to open a new planning view without any so-called template, or you can say, please bring a template so that I can edit my targeted data. And here, because it's by template, you see here the list of templates which are proposed in this particular environment, the SCM Lab solution. So for instance, we've got some templates dedicated to historical cleansing. 
for instance. So if I do so, then a template and even a planning view is made of a definition from the time axis, or how many periods do I want to see? What are the, the attributes, the business attributes I want to display the data against? Here, currently, I say I want to see everything about product and customer. Okay. And which explicit data do I want to see? Which key figure? And you see here that because it's the history cleansing template, it's all about cleaning history, meaning the actuals, then the actuals of promotion, then the years, the, the, the shifted actuals by one year, two years, three years in order not to slide left, I mean, horizontally too, too much. Okay. Then we, you will see here the automatically corrected history out of the IBP calculation. Then the possibility for the user to do some manual correction. Then the reference history and a total, uh, total history, which will be then later used in forecasting. So this is the key figure element of a planning view. Then you have a layout element of a planning view, which lets you organize. Do you want to see your attributes in columns, in rows? So it's all, 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 all about your, your decision. By default, usually the key figures are horizontal and the time axis is at the top of the master uh, of the data table. Then you are you can filter. So better you do the, the filtering. And anyway, also there is some parameters to avoid anyone to load too much data if, if required. And then finally, you can also call for some alerts which needs to be customized first. And then these alerts will be would contribute into the, the planning view. Uh, display by highlighting some values calculating by IBP. Okay, this is here an, a simple pl planning view with only one worksheet. Okay, now if I select another planning view, which is for instance in the tactical supply plan, I wish to see all the result of the planning heuristics by mean of this template. Here in this case, you see this template is made of several worksheets. To separate the different domains it's very useful to separate the domains so let me return for the, the sake of this demo only to historical data that would be good enough for this overview okay and then let me also by the way filter only couple products which would be finished goods here we are now in a in a template which has been prepared uh, from uh, with a certain layout okay you control the layout, meaning the color and all this, by means of an IBP EPN derived uh, option. So let me show you that. You have here view format, which is in fact a hidden worksheet, where you can control by an easy and simplistic capabilities. You can control the way you want to show the data. For instance, here I want to see actual quantity with the customer being highlighted in blue and uh, with the border on the top and so on. And I want to see the promotion says actual as white in order to say the user, you know what, you can edit. White means edit and so on. We can maintain data. We forgot the numerical pad. Yeah, okay, for instance. And we see even the warnings to say, hey, be careful, you have changed something. Next time you save, it's going to go back to the, to the to the database. This is an Excel, so you cut, paste, you you can you can manipulate the data. In this Excel add-in, then you have also you see the full ribbon for you to manage the data and the, I would say the calculation power of IBP. In standard with IBP, nothing is really calculated in Excel. This is all done by the central server, the central IBP server unless you have local macros and I'll come to that XSBS IBP in another video where you can fully extend, uh, you can extend a lot the standard IBP. But here in this current video, let me focus only on the standard Excel proposal. So in this one, what do we see in this ribbon? We see that we can manage the view. We can use the filters, redefine the filters, come back on the view, come back on the view and by the way, say, oh, I need a more period, uh, I need uh, different key figures and so on. It's really left to you. It's very easy. So you can do the, the change you like. It's not going to override the template that I've used unless you are a consultant and you come back here and say update. But that you should not have 
in your ribbon when you use IVP, only the consultant and the IT of your company would have this option. So that's about managing the planning view. Then you see here, save data. Of course, save data because the IVP Excel is meant to manage data. So the 250 I want to save, then I, I need to comment. And this 250 returns to the, to the database. Next time I come back, or do I refresh? The 250 is not part of my new data set. Uh, but also what you can do in this data input, you can run some simulations. They are of different kinds, really. You can do demand planning oriented simulation by calculating, for instance here, an history cleansing, or you can run a forecast calculation, which would override the key figure forecast, which is not shown here. I could also run um, <clears throat> heuristics, which is in fact the MRP kind of planning engine in IVP. Or I can just simply run the simulation basic. Say, for instance, uh, I see my corrected history is of 4,287. And then I want to add a reference history of 500 or 5,000. Okay. You see that the 5,000 is not interacting automatically with IVP. So to say IVP, please apply the business rules defined in IVP, you need to, to run the simulate basic, which means return the 5,000 as an input, and please give me the, the result. And we see now that, ah, total corrective history, in fact, is this plus this. Ah, okay. So there is no sum. You see the formula, there is no sum in this cell here. It's made by IVP. Whenever you trigger the simulation basic. By the way, with the new release 2311, there is a number of hotkey, so meaning the keyboard accelerator to trigger those different buttons here. For the demo i click so if you are happy with that or you want to refresh the data to go back to what it was before you can say okay refresh and then the 5000 disappears because i have not saved since i entered it okay can go offline if you want to work in the train there is some dashboard and that's all about the alerts remember the alerts there is an alert section here where you can add alerts unless you have created that in the configuration of IVP, which is currently here, not the case. Okay, I've got no specific alert on the demand pl planning for this one. Therefore, I can select it. Otherwise, it would come here in this dashboard showing you the current active alerts due to the business rules defined in the IVP engine. Then we've seen the master data. So edit the master data. You can manage the master data. You can have favorites of master data. That makes me thinking that what we are doing here in this planning view, if you change the color, if you change anything, you can save your own favorite, the favorite of planning view. And for that, you just say, I want to add a new favorite. It's going to be demo, okay? demo uh, IVP series. Done. Now, next time I come here, here, and you see now demo IVP series is available for next time. And then the rest here is all about triggering jobs and activities uh, happening in the IVP server and which will then uh, interact with your local Excel. So for instance, I say I have the idea of the promotions actual forecast was 550 for this period and that was the case for this. Okay. And I don't want to say then in that case, I can call the scenario management that is available in IVP. I can create a scenario and I say, oh, let me create a scenario which name is the demo IVP series. Okay. And, uh, and it was about the 555, the quantity 555. Save it. Now, see, the system will automatically redisplay the, the full screen, but adding a new column, which let me know that I am in the IVP series column. So I need here yeah, to do some, uh, some re resizing uh, because of that. It's not because I have switched off the automatic sizing. It was my decision. Okay. But then I see that now I am the data have been saved in the database under a, a scenario. So this is where you manage the scenario and scenario are available everywhere in IVP in batch jobs, in reporting, uh, and here in Excel, of course, obviously. 
if you want to return to the normal scenario, you can also come back here and say, hmm, edit my view. And by the way, by opening again this left uh, folder, you see here version scenario. Now the system knows that we are, oh, sorry, DEMA IBP series. Let's go back to the IBP. I can even select two scenarios at the same time. Let's do that. And you see now that I see for each key figure the two scenarios available, the baseline and, the, and this one. And we, see, we can see, can see the comparison. In the baseline scenario, it's nothing. And in the scenario itself, there is 555 available. Let's simplify this display by removing or returning to the baseline scenario. And like this, you can even display multiple versions, multiple scenarios. You can also trigger some batch jobs. For instance, uh, here, this is not the case. Let me go for the, for the sake of this demo. Let me go to another template. And this template will be baseline forecast where I calculate the statistical forecast. It's another template with different key figures, still the same, uh, the same attributes here, but that's not uh, the point. And by the way, I want to calculate the forecast. Okay, let's simulate the calculation of the forecast using the best fit. And now the best fit has run. We see the result of the new forecast. Okay, and which gives me a so-called baseline in preparation to be this value. Now, I wish to trigger a copy of this key figure into this key figure as I would say the conclusion step of a demand planning where I calculate the statistical uh, forecast and I want to say now it's good. My statistical forecast is good. Not the demand plan yet, huh? but the statistical at least. For that, I need to run jobs, which I can trigger from here. Run a job, run a copy operator, and then select, for instance, publish baseline. Yeah, but Daniel, we can do that with Excel. Yes, of course, but here by running a job, you do that on thousands of combinations, and, uh, and that's no point to do that manually. Now, now the job is finished. And now if I refresh, meaning I reload from the database the data, you will see now that this is copied at the bottom here, at the second, which means here now, functionally speaking, the baseline is available for the next, the downward process steps of the demand planning. So I've explained you here uh, the application job out of this Excel proposition from IBP. You may, you may be assigned with some task if you have some process running, some workflows running. And then the rest is for the consultants uh, to manage the template, which you have seen, and there is many templates in these particular options here. Uh, and you see here in the SCM lab solution, we have many templates for the demand, for the supply tactical planning, and even for the SNOP. Okay. So you manage the template this way. The rest is details, uh, which is not valid for today presentation. Just to summarize, we've seen the IBP Excel add-in, which is a component to implement on your Excel layer in order to manage the data the manipulation in Excel versus the IBP sitting in the cloud. Hope you appreciate this presentation and it's clearer for you about master data, be careful, planning data, very good solutions. And by the way, again, thanks of subscribing or liking and see you next.